morning. This is Hung Shur coming to you from the Gold Coast of Queensland, Australia, among the Buddha's senior disciples known as the Tara Gata, the songs of the elder Buddhist monks. Sunita was an outcast. He was a Chandala. He was a Harijan, a child of God, now known as a scavenger, the lowest caste. And he, his father disappeared when he was a child. He had a dysfunctional family. He was a beggar. He had to support his own life by going to pujas, going to ceremonies. And when they were done, he would pick up the broken flowers and he left over food, sell what he could and, and throw the rest away. But he had one redeeming practice that carried him through, which was he made ritual prostrations. He bowed and he bowed to his future awakening. He didn't know he was going to meet the Buddha, but when he did, his life changed. I was born poor in a lowly family. Father disappeared, there was little to eat. My work was degrading, I gathered withered flowers from the shrines, I sold what I could threw the rest away people found me disgusting and they despised me they just ignored me oh they looked away the pain of rejection hurt as much as the hunger but I lowered my heart and I bowed every day saw the great hero entering the city the greatly awakened one with his monks in line the most supreme of the Magadans walking like a lotus pure and refined now being an outcast uh, for Sunita to draw near the Buddha, who was a kshatriya, the warrior, the ruler class. If the shadow of an outcast touches the body of a Brahmin or a kshatriya, the legend says they can never wash it clean. And the upper caste person is within his rights to beat him, kick him to the curb, or do him physical harm. Sunita, because of his practice of bowing, sees the Buddha and takes his chance. I lost all fear I set down my pole and baskets I drew near And I wanted to bow And then he The conqueror of Mara Stopped the line He stood still Out of kindness Just for me After showing reverence at the feet of the teacher I stood to one side And I said these words O oh, great sage Supreme Among all beings May I take refuge And leave home with you The compassionate teacher Raised one hand in a blessing with the sound of kindness for all the world. He said, come monk, that was my ordination. I left home and my new life began. Now, if this were a movie, the scene would show a lonely hut high in the mountains and Sunita cultivating as a hermit following the Buddha's instructions out in the wilderness. Now I live alone here in the mountains. I never tire. I cultivate the way. Following my teacher's words just as he taught me. With one mind by night and by day. 
as the sun went down, I entered Samadhi. I saw my past lives, I opened my heavenly eye. Just before dawn, I broke through the mass of darkness. To the state of the deathless, I did certify. night was ending and the sun was returning Indra and Brahma paid their respects to me with the palms together shining light the way gods do with eloquence they said these words to me one of the beautiful ironies of Sunita's verse is, here are Indra and Brahma, chief among gods, higher even than the human Brahmins. And what do they do? They want to celebrate Sunita's accomplishment, never mind his worldly caste. What do the chief among gods say? Homage to you, thoroughbred of humans. Homage to you, human supreme your afflictions have ended all your suffering is over you dear sir are worthy of offerings now the penultimate verse of Sunita's biographical poem brings the Buddha back into the scene and there is some ironic social commentary here as the Buddha claims Sunita a true Brahman, not by birth, not by parentage, not by social status, but by inner virtue, by wisdom and compassion. Upon seeing me, venerated by the devas, the teacher smiled, and he proclaimed, through austerity, celibacy, restraint, and self-control. He became a Brahman. Sunita is a Brahman supreme. The story of Sunita.